There are bright days in the history of nations that are a source of pride for those nations. So what if those days mark the fulfillment of the glad tidings of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him? They are undoubtedly shining stars in the sky. Rather they are suns that illuminate the world and raise our Ummah high. Up to the sky, moreover, from among these great days are the days of the anniversary of the conquest of Constantinople. Our beloved messenger, peace be upon him, surrounded by his companions, who would transcribe for him, we asked, which of the two cities will be open first, Constantinople or Rome? He answered, the city of Heraclius will be open first, meaning Constantinople. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also foretold, you will open Constantinople, its Amir is the best Amir, and the best army that army will be. These words, authenticated and transmitted from generation to generation, echoed throughout the history of the Ummah, inspiring hope, ambition and sincere effort in some of the greatest leaders, warriors and scholars to have emerged in our Ummah. The honour of being described as the best Amir and the best army was desired by every sincere Muslim. It was not until 857 years after the Hijra on the 20th of Jamada al awwal that the 21-year-old Muhammad ibn Murad gained his title Al-Fadeh, the Conqueror, by fulfilling the prophecy of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, by liberating Constantinople. He renamed the city Istanbul, the city of Islam, protected its Christian residence and went on a campaign of redeveloping the city to even greater heights than the Byzantines had achieved. He commissioned the improvement of the city's sanitation system, utilised clean sources of water for its citizens, opened kitchens for the hungry, and ordered the building of many of the mosques and universities that we can still see today. He ensured that non-Muslims were protected under the contract of Dima, and even made Istanbul the capital city of his rule. Conquering Constantinople was no easy task. Muhammad al fadl had to account for the punishing winter in planning his siege of the city. He had to build state-of-the-art technology for that time and he had to pull off feats of logistical brilliance in record time. So this Jamada al awwal on the anniversary of this remarkable victory, there are two important lessons that the Ummah must learn today. First, the distance between the blessed words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Messenger وسلم, prophesizing the liberation of Constantinople and its occurrence spanned over 800 years. During the 800 years, imagine all the events that had taken place. The Muslims had experienced the loss of the Khulafa al Rashidun, lived through the passing of the Umayyad Caliphate and the weakening of the Abbasid Caliphate, and fought the Crusaders to whom they had lost and then regained Jerusalem and had been brutalized by the Mongols. Yet even after eight centuries and successive failures of caliphs at securing the city of Constantinople, the Ummah had not lost hope or conviction in the words of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, that they would indeed take the capital of the Byzantine Empire. For Muslims, the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were not treated as some impossible dream or some distant point of academic theology. Rather, the promise of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was firmly considered as tangible gold that Muslims would work towards. al fatihs father Murad spent much of his own life trying to conquer Constantinople and instilled this passion into his son. Sultan Murad provided the best religious education for his son and Muhammad's teacher Akshamsuddin continued to encourage him to make an attempt at liberating the city. Is it not then incumbent upon this generation of Muslims to have hope and trust in another promise of Allah's Messenger peace be upon him who after foretelling the loss of Khilafah al Rashida, rightly guided Caliphate followed by a period of family rule, followed by a harsh and then coercive rule, promised us, then there will be the Khilafah upon the way of the Prophethood, Al-Minhaj al nabuwa 
Second, the relationship of Muslims with prophecy is not one of passivity. Rather, the glad tidings of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, are supposed to motivate us towards actions in preparing for this mission. Al Fatih knew he would have to construct a fortress to keep his soldiers sheltered so he could continue his siege of Constantinople over the winter. He secured the best cannon engineer at that time to construct the cannons to be used against the formidable defences of the city. In addition, in an amazing feat of logistics, he was able to move 70 ships over the Galata Hill, gliding them overland over greased wooden tracks to enter the Golden Horn, which was otherwise defended from the sea by a heavy chain. The sudden appearance of the ships demoralized the Byzantine army. It is clear that Muhammad al fatih did not let the promise of eventual victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over Constantinople calm him into complacency. Rather, he was eager to be the leader of the army to achieve this great honor and now is remembered throughout history. Why should we then, close to a hundred years after the fall of the Khalafa, allow ourselves to be tranquilized with mere glimmers of a future glory or breathless retellings of the Hadith about the end of times and the arrival of the Mahdi? Rather than waiting for the fulfillment of these promises, we should be eager to be of those who are part of the immense victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised, the return of full and complete Islamic rule upon the way of the prophethood. We are at a unique time in the history of this Ummah. Never before has the Muslim Ummah remained for so long without a Khalifa or a Caliphate state. Moreover, while its absence exposes us to never-ending tragedies, within this test lies our greatest opportunity. As Muslims alive today, we have the unparalleled opportunity to engage in a struggle that was previously only carried out by prophets and their immediate followers. Today we have the opportunity to re-establish the full implementation of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and restore the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to its rightful place. The reward for this work surpasses the reward of liberating any one city. This is the work of liberating of all the Muslim lands and the restoration of dignity and protection to the Ummah as a whole. In preparing for this task, it is incumbent upon us to study the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in order to observe how he was able to transform a small group of powerless and persecuted believers in Mecca into the leaders of the greatest civilization brought forth to mankind. He worked with a small group of companions, instilling in them conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and created formidable Islamic personalities within them. Leading this group, he then took his message to the public, engaging with both the common folk of Mecca as well as the tribal elders of Arabia until he found a receptive ear in the Oz and Khazraj of Yathrib the Ansar. As believers it is incumbent on us to follow this model for change. Not only is this an immense opportunity for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is also an obligation as Allah's messenger peace be upon him tells us, whoever dies without a bayah to the Khalifa upon his neck has died a death of Jahaliya. The death of Jahaliya here indicates that being without a legitimate Khalifa is prohibited. This makes the existence of the Khilafa obligatory as agreed upon by all classical scholars including Imam al-Nawawi, al-Qurtabi, al-Juwaini, al-Daftazani and al-Dahrawi. We cannot let hopelessness or complacency cloud our judgment and delay us from our duty. Rather, we must be racing towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he says, Race towards forgiveness from your Lord and a garden whose width is like the width of the heavens and earth, prepared for those who believed in Allah and his messengers, that is the bounty of Allah, that he gives to whom he wills, and Allah is a 
possessor of great bounty. O oh Allah, grant us the honor of being among the ones to fulfill the prophecy of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, of establishing the Khilafah upon the way of the Prophethood. Amin.